I'm Morgan. Um, I'm part of Crep City, the UK's number one and original sneaker event. Well, I guess the shoe that started for me was the Nike Dunk. Um, like back in school, uh, we used to have like a sports shop like down the road, um, and I always used to go there. With my mum once a year, and we used to get like all the sports clothes, trainers, um, just like get all your gear for the year basically. So I had this one chance to choose what I wanted, and they had these low, they weren't like SB dunks, they were just standard low dunks. Um, so these aren't the ones I had, these are just some like these a few years later. Um, but yeah, those were the first things I had. I used to wear them in PE, I used to wear them at school mufty days. Um, so like Nike was probably the first brand that I sort of went for. Well, basically, I started out getting a few pairs, always looking after my kicks because there wasn't a lot of money around the house. So it was always sort of like you got to kind of treat them, make them last a long time. Um, and when I first started working, uh, I started going to like stores, like streetwear stores. We used to use Natajax a lot. Um, and I bought, there was a sale on, and I bought, instead of buying one pair, I bought two because it was a good price. Um, and they were like all white Adidas like a forum and they had suede and silver on them and they're fucking crazy um i bought two pairs and that basically started off for me and i just kept buying um but i think i collect a lot of stuff like i collect i collect star wars figures i collect cactuses i collect uh books like i love my books as well um so i'm always collecting some stuff i think it's just acquiring stuff it's not even like about flexing it and shit you know what i mean it's just about like i love having loads of stuff in my house that i love and I can always, I always like forgetting about it and then coming back to it a little bit later and just be like, oh, look, I forgot I had that, but I've got a collection now, so it's cool. EQT Support 93s, I love these. Um, getting, before they sort of came back out, like finding my size in this shoe was a myth. Uh, they always used to come in like little shoes. Um, so yeah, this is this has got to be one one of my favourites, and this is a dead stop pair. I've got quite a few, I've got a really used one, and the toe box is going to point you now. Um, but yeah, I've got a few of these, and I've got I've got like loads of collabs as well. This is this is one of my favourite models. Um, so yeah, going on from that is uh, Silent Listeners by Ben Drury. Um, I picked these up at Crep City for peanuts from Josh Cole. I got them for like hundred quid. Or something like that, um, and like as you can see, the conditions are amazing on them. I just really love it's the materials. It's got this like really old like new bucky that Nike used to use back in the day on like um, a lot of their kicks, and especially like you see lots. Of, I like the perforations. They're like quite nice perforations. Like you see it on. Um, uh, what's the kick? What's the trainer? The white one, the other Dizzy Rascal one. Tongue and cheeks. You see it on tongue and cheeks. You see it on the Ben Drury's, the other Ben Drury's, the Air Max ones with the. 3M on the front, um, so yeah, these these just got a really nice shape, really nice shape, and I've got blue laces in one, red laces in the other, so yeah, keep it keep it swaggy. Um, and then number f oh, number three is these, which are some custom um, US 574s that uh, I visited a New Balance press day, and a lot of the shoes on display were kind of rubbish, but like the bonus of going to the press day was that you got to um, do a pair of the US 574s. I think you could choose another option, but these were like everyone was sort of put the name down to get a pair, and I'd always wanted to do uh, some of the US customs, but it's they're so expensive, and getting you got to get them shipped over to a different address. You got to get proxy on them. Um, so yeah, so I based these. I basically I had like a really tight deadline to get these made, so I based them off um, my favourite uh, book. Which is Conan the Barbarian, uh, but not my favorite book, but like my favorite sort of like genre, the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's like they're called like Hyborian, Hyborian Legends. So you got like the leather, uh, black, got some steel for the blades, and then red for the blood. Um, but yeah, these are beautiful. Really, really love these. Okay, I probably, I probably burn these because I've got loads of these so I can just burn one of these and I've just got loads so I just so I don't mind that. I can always, I can, you can always get these they came out they came out not so long ago so it's not hard to pick them up. Um, 
Yo, I don't know because you might not be able to make these anymore because the options might have gone. But then I can sort of kind of stumble upon these. So I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably give these away um, and then rock these because you ain't going to find these anymore if the options go. But yeah, that's that's my choices. This is what I consider fire. These, I think these are beautiful. Um, from a materials perspective, just from a colorways perspective, just rockabilly. Um, it's a shoe that I haven't worn just because they'll never look the same once you wear them. Um, so I've never worn them up. But yeah, they, I've got them in a little bag and everything. So these are St. Alfred's. Um, from Chicago. I have to double check that. Um, it's Chicago, isn't it? I'm gonna say Chicago. Um, so yeah, so these are St. Alfred's. Um, I remember John Riker camped for me for these. Actually, didn't pick them up for me. Uh, it wasn't so busy back then um, to get Asics. Uh, and I used to have a lot of pairs. I used to like probably like two, two or three years ago. Um, I probably had one of the biggest collections of Asics, definitely in the UK. Um, I had a lot of stuff. I used to love it. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. It's sort of like. I get really attached to my shoes, I get really attached to like the culture around it and it was basically like if you had a really good pub that you went to, you have a really good pub and loads of dickheads started turning up at your pub, you wouldn't really go to that pub anymore. So that was that's like my analogy uh, for the way that the scene's sort of gone, uh, especially with ASICs and stuff. But I mean like this year they've definitely had a good step forward, um, so I'm really excited to see what they've got coming out. And, 25th pair, I can't wait for the last one. So yeah, these St. Alfred's fire, absolute fire. Last pair of ball. Um, this is the shattered backboards. These are beautiful. Uh, the materials are oh, just gonna sound like someone straight off Instagram. Um, yeah, the materials, um, the build quality, the standards are amazing. Um, but no, these are really, really nice. Um, and actually, like, I'm, with ones, I'm like a really big fan of OG colorways, and I've got the Royals and I've got the Breads as well. Um, but these are like the best, the best non-OG colorway that I think has graced the one. Um, so yeah, these are beautiful. Love these. Really have a favorite brand. Um, there's brands that I've enjoyed working with. So I've really enjoyed working with Asics. I've really enjoyed working with Adidas. Um, Puma I've enjoyed working with. So I don't have like I don't have like a favorite brand. I've bought a lot of Nike stuff. I've got everything, man. I've got New Balance. Um, so yeah, I've got no favorites. I've got love for everything. Um, and that's not me just like dodging the question. It's just I don't have a pure favorite. There's like a there's favorite shoes that I like, which brands produce, which I wouldn't wear anything else. But as far as brands goes, they've all got good things about them, they've all got bad things about them, so yeah. This shoe is the fucking greatest shoe in existence right now. This, I'm, I'm basically being an advert right now, but this, I'll have, I've got like 10 pairs of these. I fucking wear, I've got, do you want to pass me my battered ones up? Oh, so yeah, I wear these. This is like this is my warm pair. I wear these pretty much every day. Uh, gym in these. Uh, I just I just love them. They look amazing. They're great on foot. So yeah, this is my brand new. This is a warm pair. Um, but yeah, this shoe's stunning. Like I don't like people cutting the cages off. Like don't fucking cut the cages off. It looks shit. It makes them look like a sock. Um, so please stop doing that. And please stop painting the soles black because. That looks shit as well because Boost is meant to be white. Do you know what I mean? They're gonna, they're probably gonna do a covering for the Boost down the line, like they did for the Yeezy. So you're having outsole, but like it's meant to be the standout thing is the sole. You're meant to see the sole, and that's why it's white, and it cracks and looks crap. So please don't do it. It's beautiful in its original form. Yeah, pass me that one as well. So yeah, this is this is why I cop lately as well. I cop these. So I've got this is a fucking awesome colorway. It's like grey. Um, Got a little bit of fleckling on there, man. Uh, but yeah, ultra boost, ultra, ultra, ultra boost. Buy it, wear it. Yes. Gel Saga. I. These are my foot patrols that I camped out for. Um, I can't remember. It was like 2012, 2011. Um, this was 
such a good camp. I met so many good people at this camp. And like, do you know what? I came in the morning of the camp. So this is what's different. And I'm not even talking, I'm not even going to front and say that I'm a OG and that I've come from like mad in the past, but I'm just saying the difference in like a few years is astounding. So these are better than any pretty much gel sign collaborations that have come out. These are like one of the best ASICS collaborations. I mean, mine don't look brand new. Mine, are, I've worn these a lot, so they've gone like brown. Um, but yeah, so we, I went, got on the train at four o'clock in the morning, got to the venue about six, sat around my iPad on my little stool. Um, and then everybody rocked up about 30 minutes to open in. Got, I got box number eight. I got special box number eight with these. Um, so yeah, it was just simple. And you can't do that anymore and it's a real big shame that you can't because I ain't got time to spend three days I don't want to sit in the same clothes for three days do you know what I mean this is stupid um, so yeah essential pair to have in the collection they're so comfy uh, I'm not even just talking about just collaboration sagas in general just like all sagas like, they're really really comfy they look really good on foot and I think it's the best model that ASICs do so yeah gel saga Like, I hate fashion sneakers. Oh, like, I can't even, I will never wear. Do you know what, like, I will, I will, sometimes I have, like, backtracked on stuff because I used to hate Jordan 5s. Like, quite a few years back, I used to hate Jordan 5s and that's one of my favourite Jordans and there was just something about Jordans I didn't like and so I have to bite the bullet on that one, just take that. But, like, Balenciagas, all that, like, Rassim and shit, I fucking hate it. I think that shit with skinny jeans and the fucking rips in them, just, just like, oh, that is just like unmasculine to me. I don't like it, um, and it's yeah, it's just not, not my sort of style. Overrated. Other overrated stuff. Um, sock darts. Overrated. Who who thinks about sock darts anymore? It's gone. No one's rem no one remembers that. It's just gone. Like we had all that hype. It was like, yo, sock darts. I love them. Let me pay like three hundred pounds. Now who's who's thinking about sock darts nowadays? No one. Um, but something that's probably overrated that does deserve the overration award. Overrated award would be these. Which um kind of deserving of being overrated to be honest because they are overrated but I rate them. So yeah, easy 350 boosts. And oh fuck, I've really just fucked myself over with this, haven't I? So I was just talking about like fashion shit, and this is basically like the fashiony shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know, man. I probably dig myself in. Oh, this is a bit more fashion, but I just think this is crazy and out there. So you got like that. There ain't no shoe like that. Look at that like fucking pattern going. That's mad. Um, the only thing that is overrated about these is the sole, which is really a big letdown because this is a shoe that. I like to wear every day, um, and I have worn a lot actually. I'm like, I'm not scared about wearing these, but as you can see, like this, this like whatever it is, like it looks to me about the same foam that you get on an Air Max 90. Um, so I'm, I've had 90s in the past that I've got wet when I've cleaned them and I've left to dry and it's exploded. Um, so I, I'm not sure of like the length of time on these, which is a bit upsetting because this is quite a nice shoe. And I can wear this with a lot of stuff and almost feel like I'm updating an outfit. But yeah. So these are these win overrated and underrated at the same time, sort of thing. I'm taking we talk about IDs as well in this. Um so I love I love IDs. And like if you look at some of the older Air Max IDs, they are crazy. They look so good. I remember there's a guy in London who does like it's got like a South Beach Air Max one, which is awesome. Um and those are really really cool um, I like those I like all the systems and like options I think you can only the only bet you can get is by having more um, but like this this was this is like a really special shoe for me um, so as everyone knows I love Conan the Barbarian and that is a Conan the Barbarian um, themed shoe which managed to get through Adidas's like copyright lock because uh, I used a few different codes and a few back doors um, so this managed to get made um, and I love it it's amazing um, yeah I think customization posts are dope I mean that MyZX Flux program 
I've actually got... Uh, yo, these. So I went over to Berlin when this first came out, and uh, this was like my first sort of press trip abroad. Um, so like, I always remember really good memories. Shouts to Felix and like everyone else at Adidas. Um, and I got to basically design the first YZ Flux. So this was they got they told me this was their favourite, so I'm like, yo, I'm taking I'm taking that. Um this was based on like Icelandic uh like frozen river patterns and stuff. Um uh, but you're not really allowed to use images off the internet, but I took this off the internet. So no one knows who it's by. Um so yeah props to the guy for that photo because it's awesome. Um so yeah this is a really good um Mind of Flux was really really good. I really enjoyed that. It's kinda of like lost its sort of like hype now but I still I still got some really decent pairs from it. Um with customs in general, um, I kind of think just don't really, don't really dig it. It's like, and I've, I've got a lot of respect for the people who do it, and I've got a lot of respect for their talent. Um, but I mean, I used to back in the days to paint warhammers and shit. Do you know what I mean? So my painting skills for like miniatures and shit are fucking sick. Um, that was when I was a kid, and like, I just. Like people, they try and big it up. All it is is like you're just stripping down something, painting something. Do you know what I mean? I don't understand how you can charge forty quid uh, for that personally. Um, but yeah, no props to the guys who do it. They do it well. There's only a few in the UK. Uh, I think America is absolutely destroying everything, especially with like machete and stuff, because that's like a proper customization, like cutting a sole off um, and sticking it back on with like the proper decent glue and stuff. Like that's like that's a decent custom. Do you know what I mean? Like giving it a few coats. I mean, like I've been to events and I've sat at people's custom tables and I've picked up the shoes, and I've and I, I will always do this. I'll literally go up to them, like, just move them around and shit. Um, and they always crack, and they're always. Do you know what I mean? And I, I slightly. How can you wear that on your feet? How are you gonna pay money for that? It's just gonna. This is gonna disintegrate. Um, so yeah, not the biggest custom fans. I don't think I've got any myself. Um, I'm happy with stuff like custom lace locks and I'm happy with stuff, all that sort of like laces and shit. Um, but actually painting onto a shoe, um, I just, it's not my sort of thing man, just, I'll just get it made. Um, yeah, I could probably rant for ages, but we don't want this to be a 40 minute video, we want this to be like a 20 minute video. Um, but yeah, like I probably wouldn't say like one thing I'm not gonna put out resellers and stuff because it's just what it is um, I'd probably have to say just the whole sort of mindset of the sneaker the new sneaker community in general I'm not like I'm not gonna like sit around and pretend to be something I'm not um, like everyone knows they can come speak to me and I'll give everyone the time of day um, but there's, there seems to be so many attitudes and people just need to sort of sit back and sort of realise you're not big dogs, you don't sort of own the world. You know what I mean, just because you've got a few pairs of kicks, don't make you big, billy big bollocks. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, this is meaningless. You know what I mean, I love this shit. Look, it's got cone on it, I fucking love that shit. But all the rest of this stuff is just like rubber and plastic, you know what I'm saying? Uh, bit of suede, bit of leather. Um, but like, do you know what? Some good stuff has come from it. So, like, Crep City's come from it. People have started businesses off the back of it. People are making money off it. People, which is good. People making money off of people, which is bad. But, like, it's it's always going to happen. It's always going to be one of those things. Um, everyone's going to... It's just a doggy dog world. I'm, I've made a lot of friends in the community. I've made a lot of lifelong friends. Um, I spend all of my day on Facebook. I spend all of my day... On Instagram, I spend all my day on my emails, chatting to people about shoes, chatting to people about trainers. I can talk about nothing else but trainers for hours. It's just my stuff. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, it's just the mindset of the community in general. I just wish everybody would sort of take a minute to sit back and be a little bit more polite. Um, maybe they, maybe it's just like a small mindedness and they can't sort of look at things for the bigger picture. Um, and f I hopefully think that I can take a step back and sort of see the bigger picture and see look at myself and look at what's going on um so yeah it's just one of those things man just just people need to cheer up and be happier do you know what i mean it's not it's not all the end of the world um i just want to make a place where people will have a good time and i want it to, and i want to do it every day and i want it to be my job and i want i want to live off it i want to live of making people have a good time i think which is i think which is really nice
thing to have. Well, I guess I, I should talk about like, a little bit of history with, my, with Crypt City and me. Um, so, I started out going to uh, the shop in Bearded Kicks, um, and I went to an event called Sneaker Scoundrels, which was run by um, James Gambo um, back in the day. He's not, he's, I don't think he's really into the scene that much anymore, but he used to be a massive SB collector. Um, and I went to that event and I bought a Grail there, which I haven't actually mentioned in this video, which I forgot about, which I should probably bring out later on. Um, and I started collecting airflows from that event and I had, I think I had like, I had loads of pairs of airflows, I had like all different colours, I had teals, the only ones that never had cactus, um, and some of the selfridges, uh, but I loved airflows. And yeah, that's where I bought my first, I spent a lot of money on a pair of airflows back then. Um, and looking back now, it's probably too much. Um, but I got a really good guy, and I still know that guy today. Um, and while I was at the event, I met a guy called Ron, and he gave me a flyer for Crep City. And I can't. It's three or four. That's why I remember. It's three or four. Um, and in between that time, I went to Crooked Tongues Barbecue, and I had a really good time. And I met a lot of good friends um, who I still know today as well. And we sort of like, let's go to Crep City. Let's why don't we go. So we all decided to go to Crep City, um, and I met Ron there, and I just remember, <clears throat> I remember him looking at me and just being like, yo, this guy actually came down, do you know what I mean? I asked him to come and he come down. I remember he just like getting me in past all the queue, and it was a big queue then as well. It wasn't like, nothing like it is now, but it was a big queue. And I just remember having the the sickest day, probably, that first Crep City was probably one of the sickest days. So I met so many people, um, and the shoes were just completely different, do you know what I mean? It was like, I was abs selling like, all this like, like this, this supreme on abs table like if you put out now like people would just be going mental for do you know what I mean and it was just like tup it was like tuppence it was like five quid for like a bottle opener or something like a supreme bottle I don't know um, but like yeah the the stuff there was mental um, and that sort of started off my sort of love affair with CC and then it went to helping at the events I used to help I used to come really early and take away all the tables. Um, I used to stand at the door and help with tickets. Just anything I could do, I would do it. And I just, yeah. And basically, um, I watched it grow. And I watched it grow. And it got really, really big. And we weren't very good at social. We were really, really bad. Um, and I was just like, look, this is... This, I enjoy doing social media. This is like my sort of like gig. I'm not like... I didn't go to college and do it. I didn't train to do it. It's just something I quite enjoy. Like I'm dyslexic, my spelling's awful. Do you know what I mean? Like all the time, I'm pretty much asking everyone else, like, how the fuck do I spell this? Um, but yeah, so I took over the social media, and I think we went from like I think it was something like five k followers to what we are now, which is like two hundred sixty five k. Like it's pretty much the biggest account for trainers, like all trainers, an event account in Europe and the UK. Um, so yeah. So that's what I did. I did all the social media. Um, I did it for every event, and it rose, and I put out ideas, like I was just doing like, let's do tickets, let's do VIP tickets, let's, let's do that. Like anything I could do, I was sort of just like sat on the, sat in little meetings, so I was chirping in, just chirping my ideas. And I just did more and more and more. Um, and I think Ron started to rely on me to almost be like a conscience and just suggestions and stuff and just doing ideas. And basically just ended up with me being um, number th number three, so it's like there's me, Paul, and Ron, and we basically do the whole thing. So we're all good at different things, um, and yeah. So for me, I mean, like I went through, I went like doing Crep C, like I lost a lot of stuff. So like I never had a lot of money, and it was it was a full time it was a full time gig. Do you know what I mean? It was nothing, and it wasn't paying. And you used to, there was just some months where you just like you'd be trying to make end meet you'd be like I've sold and that's what I say to people like that's why I don't get so fussed about grails and stuff like that because I've had a lot of them come through my hands and I've had to sell them to live and that's why I'm, I'm not really fussed about getting them back again or like you see them at the events and you see all these grails and you just pick them up and you're like yeah but you're at an event where everybody's got grails do you know what I mean like everyone's got a pair of patterns on feet it doesn't mean anything to you so like yeah, so we went we went through really tough times. It was from really like, just we didn't know where it was going. Um, we knew we had something really special, um, and yeah, basically I had to do this do this full time. I had to go to these meetings, go to 
um, make sure the posts, I, was, I had a time schedule. I, I remember sat in one of my jobs and I was basically ditching work to go into the stock room and post on Crep City at, at a certain time and that always made me laugh because I always used to come out of work and just have all the shit that I used to deal with but then on the other side I was basically sending a message out there to the whole of the UK sneaker community it's just, it's just like I was just sat there like I'm just doing something so stupid here but like this is like game changing um, so yeah for, like for me I've seen I've seen the events grow um, and I've ho hopefully helped the events grow um, and it's just the people that I've seen come alongside it I've seen so many like connections and networking made at Crep City like would, would, would not have been made if it wasn't for the event I've seen so many brands and other events start who wouldn't have been able to do that without the the footprint that Crep City left. Do you know what I mean? Like we basically set the path for everything in the UK. And I'm not afraid to say that and I think it shows really well that everyone else is doing well off Crep City because it's a platform and that's what it's there for. It's a platform to be used. Um and that's what Crep City is for me. It's it's a it's a community it's a platform, it's an event, but at the end of the day it's just run by a bunch of guys who really like footwear um, and have to deal with all their parents having a go at them because they haven't got any more space in the attic. So yeah, that's what Crepsy is for me. I know what me and Ron have always said, it's like, if sneakers goes bust, there will always be enough people to go to Crepsy. Do you know what I mean? Even if there's a hundred people that like sneakers in the UK anymore, we will always run a Crepsy. And I will just take up the mantle and we will just do it. Even like, don't, not about money, not about nothing like that. There'll just be a crep city going. Um, I just think it's something the UK needs. Um, what I'd love to see is, I'd love to see more work with brands. Um, I'd love to see a collaboration. I'd love, like my dream is to put a shoe out there um, and people to wear that shoe. That's always been like, when people ask me what the dream is, it's like to have a crep city shoe. Just to have people like line up or just go mad. Um, yeah, so that's always been a dream. That's always something I'm working on. And there's always been chats about it and there's always been like back and forth with brands. But until someone comes out that I actually like, it's not going to happen. Um, where I see like everything else going in five years, I just like the events to get bigger. We, we're we so much more streamlined now. Do you know what I mean? Like, we've got a website. We, we like went for years without having a website. Like, we used to have to book sellers in through emails and it used to be like five or six emails to book someone in and you can imagine doing that for like 300 people it just took time and time and time and now we just got a website it's just don't come through there so it's just little innovations like that that i know we're really behind because we haven't had the time to do it as such but now um it's moving forward and those little things are happening so yeah i'd like just to see us keep doing what we're doing stick to the ethos it's always been about the community it's always been about the collectors um We've got a very, we've got a very different feel to our community than anywhere else. I find like it's definitely more of like a trainer geek sort of community than than it is like a fashion thing or um, like a hype thing. Do you know what I mean? And I really like that, and that's that's sort of the angle I really like to play. Um, and I think everyone's got their head screwed on right, and everyone's quite smart, and they know what they want, and they know what they want to get. Um, so as long as as long as the pages keep going, um, as long as the event keeps ticking over. That's what I see us doing. But like, who knows? Like, it, like we could. We're looking at doing other locations. We're looking at doing bigger venues. So I mean, you can't really get much bigger than Truman. So if we went bigger than that, then that's crazy. So you can just the scope's there to move. Um, but we just, it's just always been drilled into me that you don't flex about shit until it happens because a lot of people like to do that. They like to have a little bit of a flex and like, yeah, this is happening. But a lot of times it'll flop, and I've had that happen to me and I've done it in the past so like pretty much going forward it's just like we won't mention shit until it happens until it's like 100% locked down we won't say anything and then you'll know about it through social media we'll post it up we'll blast, blast it everywhere and you'll find out about it but yeah just keep it quiet we'll keep working and Crepsy will do well I'm excited for this this is the most exciting thing I've been waiting for all of my life and this is not the first time I've worn one of these before as I well. <laughs> okay yo yo I'm not looking.
Oh, is this like the Hanun Anosukas? Like the oh, I can't even remember what they're called now. It's like Colorados. Yeah, yeah, it's Colorados. I don't know what colorway I'd be like one of them. But yeah, I fucking ace that shit. I might it's Colorados as well. Fucking try to give me one of those shit bears. Oh, this is LeBron. Feels like a LeBron. It's like a hyperfusy thing, man. It's really hard to tell because it's so flat. But I want to go with like a LeBron Low or something. Like Albert Palmer's or some shit. Yeah, let's go with LeBron for these. Or Kobe, just like LeBron, yeah. Where is it? Where's the, where's the shoe, man? Fucking hell. Oh, this is a funny one. Oh, so this is really lightweight. He's got a swoosh. Oh fuck, how am I going to tell this? It's like some proper old, old Nike thing, man. Like, I'm not very good at this sort of shit. Um, ah, it's fucking Pegasus. Or Mariah. Feels like a Mariah. Yeah, Mariah. Size Mariah, I bet it'd be one of those ones. Yo. Oh, okay. Ain't got a clue about this one. It's got a funny tongue. This. It's Nike. Air bubble at the back, 93. Yeah, it's a 93, I think. Or well, I can't. Well, I think yeah. I think it's a night three or night four. I don't know which one. It's one of those ones with the bubble with a bat. One eighty. Yo, cool. We got this shit. All right. So that's Jello five. Which Jello five is it though? That is the question. Got suede at the back, fluffy suede, and then oh man, guessing the colourway is so hard. Ah, fluffy suede at the back, new buck at the front, new buck on the toe. Ropes. Nah, it's not them ones. It's throwing me because it's got this suede at the back, but it's new buck at the front. It's like a little panel here. Oh, would it be? I'm going to. Mm, no, I was going to say it might be been those, uh, those red ones that came out. The dark red pair. That I can't remember the name of. Um. Yeah, I ain't got a clue. So yeah, Jell Life 5 though. So I was on the model. So yeah, suck on that. Okay, what's next? I fucking ace these. But I'm the fucking best. I'm not even joking. I knew I'd fucking ace this shit. Yo. Okay, so. Oh, fucking hell, it's like stuck on. Weird tongue. Where have I seen that tongue before? Is this like a Kobe? Um, it feels like there's lines here. So I'm going to say it's a Kobe. I can't remember my Kobe numbers. So I'm going to say... Oh no, but it's kind of like... I think Kobe would be a bit more pointy. But it's definitely a techie, hyperfusy basketball shoe. I don't want to make people wait. I'm just going to go 
Go with Kobe. Let's just say Kobe. I'll fuck that one for up. Oh, <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> so, thanks for watching my video. I had a great time. Um, as I say, I'll see you at the next Crypt on October 31st, 2015 edition. Um, if you want to get involved in the video, just get in touch with Tom Ray. So, yeah, bless. Cheers, guys.